guys, I'm Emeline, aka Winter Star Cosplay, and in this video I'm going to be teaching you all about how to add detail to EVA foam armor. EVA foam armor can be kind of flat and boring if you don't add any details or textures to it, and so that's why it's really important to make sure that you're adding lots of details and interest to your piece. Most of these techniques can be applied to other EVA foam pieces as well as armor, so it's pretty handy to know all of these different things so you can build and create cool things with it. I'm going to be taking you through three different bracers that I have made out of EVA foam, showing you different details and techniques and skills for all of them so that you can learn so many different ways to add detail to your EVA foam armor. All three of these pieces are pretty different in style and shape so that you can take these techniques and apply them to any armor you're making, whether it's for an elegant wizard warrior or a battle-worn ranger from the dark forest. I really hope that you guys like this video, and if you do, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope you guys enjoy! For all three of these bracers, I used pre-made patterns and bases, which I will link below because they are available in my Etsy shop. And for this one, I started out by drawing on all the details I wanted, kind of going for a fantasy, magical, wizard, warrior type thing. After tracing on all the details I wanted and finalizing my design, I cut out all of the different pieces, starting out with the larger shapes and then moving on to the smaller swirls and ornaments. One of the first ways I'll talk about adding detail to EVA foam armor is by layering. You can cut out different thicknesses and layers of EVA foam, whether it's 2mm or thicker, and then you can glue it on top of your base armor, adding more layers. For this bracer, I chose to use 2mm EVA foam from TNT Cosplay Supply, since it's pretty nice and it's thin enough that I can easily cut it out and glue it on top. As well as adding different edges and borders and other layers, I added a bunch of different swirls and tiny details to add even more interest. After cutting them out, I also used an X-Acto knife to clean up the edges a little bit. For adding even more details, I used my small thin metal tool with rounded edges, it has a name, I just don't know what it is, and then a heat gun and heated up the EVA foam using the metal tool to press and add more detail to it. Little swirls and interesting curly cues and things just to add another layer of dimension to it. It really helped to add detail and interest to what was previously a flat and boring area and I highly recommend it for adding detail to EVA foam. I also did the same thing for the larger base area of the bracer just to add interest to that part as well. The base bracer that I'm using based on the template I made for it has these fun EVA foam straps but they didn't quite have the level of detail I wanted so I used the same technique of heating the foam and pressing in details and interest with my thin metal tool. As well as adding the same swirling details as I did on the bracer, I also added tiny holes along the edges to mimic stitch marks. I'll show you how to add larger, more obvious stitches later, but for now I just wanted a really subtle effect. Once I added all the swirling details that I wanted into the foam, it was time to glue everything together. I first traced on where I would be applying contact cement, and then started applying it to both the bracer itself and the pieces I would be gluing on. A quick note, contact cement can be pretty toxic, so make sure to wear gloves and work in a well-ventilated area, and preferably wear a respirator. I just didn't have one on hand. Also, to help spread out my glue without having to touch it, I like to use a scrap piece of EVA foam to make everything a smooth and even layer of glue. After applying all my glue, I slowly and carefully stuck all my pieces together. This step can require some time and precision, so just take all the time you need with it and don't try to rush yourself. For this first bracer, this is all the details I wanted to add to it, so at this point we're pretty much done. I will need to add an attachment method for it and then be painting it in a later video. But besides that, it's pretty much done and we can go ahead and move on to the second bracer. Like the first one, I started out by taking my printed template and drawing on the details I wanted. I didn't end up using everything that I drew on there, but that's fine because this creative process kind of works through trial and error. I also folded it in half since it was both sides of the bracer and I really only needed one. Folding it in half and then cutting out ensures that both sides are perfectly symmetrical. Then used both sides to trace it onto 2mm EVA foam for all of the detail pieces that I wanted to layer on top. Whenever you're cutting things out of EVA foam, it's very important to keep your knife sharp. If you've been using a blunt knife for a while or it seems like it's having trouble, go ahead and sharpen it, or if you're using an X-Acto knife, go and get a new blade for it. You'll be really amazed at the difference it can make. 
Anyway, for a lot of these pieces, I wanted them to have a leathery appearance and texture. And one way to do that is to take a heat gun and some crumpled up aluminum foil. Run your heat gun over your EVA foam piece until it's thoroughly heated up, and then use your aluminum foil to very vigorously press in details. You can also scratch it up a little bit if you're going for a more worn appearance like I was, but this is a really good way to add a leather-like appearance to EVA foam. The uh, texture of the aluminum foil will imprint into the foam, leaving a really interesting uh, texture. I did mention I wanted this to be worn, so I take an X-Acto knife and make quick slashing motions across the foam, adding some battle damage. Throwing a heat gun on these real quick will cause these slash marks to open up, leaving a really realistic and cool texture. I then proceeded to apply this slashing motion to all of the different pieces of my bracer. Now, I usually use contact cement to glue things together, but certain people were worried about me poisoning myself since it can be toxic, so for this one we're using hot glue. Hot glue can take a little bit longer to apply and it can be kind of messy and leave a little bit of texture under the foam that you glue, but it's not toxic and it works pretty good in a pinch, so we're going with that. Also, if for whatever reason you don't feel like using contact cement or something more professional, the hot glue works pretty good the night before convention as well. I finished gluing on all the layers of details after a while, and then it was time to move on to adding stitching details along two parts of the bracer. I wanted it to look like it had been done kind of crudely with thick leather strands, so I cut thin strips of EVA foam to mimic that. I also used my handy dandy metal tool thing that I still don't know the name of to press in small rivets where I wanted these stitch marks to be. I did this all along the seam lines on both sides of the bracer. Next, I took my small slivers of EVA foam, picked them up with some tweezers, put a little bit of hot glue on the back, and pressed them into the holes across where I wanted the stitch to be. I used my metal tool to press them in a little bit more to make it look like it was actually going into the EVA foam. Then I proceeded to do this on both sides of the bracer, all over both sides. It was, it was a lot of things. I glued lots of tiny little things down. I like how it looks though, so it's fine. I then took my hot glue gun and used it to add little rivets onto the metal portions of the bracer, squeezing out a little bit and then scrolling the top to make sure that it wouldn't drip anywhere. I did this on all of the metal corners to kind of make it look like the metal had been secured to the leather armor that way. Hot glue is honestly such a versatile thing, and if you don't have one, I would highly recommend investing in one. Anyway, for that bracer, we're pretty much done now, and so we're moving on to detailing the final bracer. I wanted this one to look like it belonged to a fantasy knight or something who hadn't really been in a lot of combat yet, didn't really have any battle damage, but they had lots of fancy things and borders on their armor. You may notice the little symbol things around the borders. I did not end up adding those, but if you wanted to, I think that 3D puffy paint would be a pretty good fit for those. Anyway, then I proceeded to cut out all the different pattern pieces and start tracing them onto EVA foam. Since I was going to be dremeling these pieces into fun shapes, I opted to use a thicker, more rigid EVA foam. This one is 10 millimeter high density foam from SKS Props. After tracing on the base shapes, I also added lines down the middle to show where I kind of wanted the foam to come to a point. Then I proceeded to cut out all the pieces, which was kind of difficult because my knife was not sharp enough and I had to go back and sharpen it a little bit more. To make it easier for when I would be dremeling it, I used my X-Acto knife to trim off some of the edges of the foam, taking off as much material as I could to make a lot less work for me later when I was dremeling it. The result after I was done was a bunch of really roughly cut out detail pieces, but don't worry, once you dremel it, it ends up looking a lot nicer. This is my Dremel, a Dremel 3000 that I put a fine tipped sanding bit on it, though you can use any kind of bit, there's so many things. And whenever you're dremeling, make sure to wear a dust mask and a pair of eyeglasses at the very least. If you want to do even more, you can work in a well-ventilated area and have a vacuum hose to help suck up the foam. I like to have my Dremel rotating at a pretty high speed and then move in quick, precise motions, going in the same motion that the Dremel is rotating. You can kind of see that there's a lot of dust flying around, which is why it's really important to have that safety equipment. Once you're done dremeling it, you can really see how much cleaner and smoother than it was before, and it will become even better once we heat seal and prime it. 
doing the swirled pieces was a little bit trickier, especially the diamond shaped one, but I think it turned out all right. My recommendations for you if you're new at Dremeling is to go slowly and carefully and practice first on a bit of scrap EVA foam, the same kind that you'll be using to make your details. Afterwards, if you've still got some messy edges, you can clean them up with a pair of tiny scissors. After you've cleaned them up as much as you want, you can take your heat gun again and run it over the foam. This will help melt any tiny specks of foam dust on top and really help clean them up even more. For this piece, since I was going to be using contact cement again, working near a window with a fan blowing out of it for safety purposes, I traced on where I needed all the details to go and then added contact cement on top, both to the base bracer and the detail pieces I would be gluing on top. Once the glue had dried, I carefully took my detail pieces and pressed them onto the foam, being careful to make sure everything lined up and looked good. After I glued everything on, there were a couple of gaps in between the edge pieces especially, but I can go back and fix that later with some flex seal or foam clay. And because I wanted this one to have a more elegant yet still simplistic feel to it, this is all the details I chose to add, though of course you can add more to yours if you want to. And we're done! I hope you guys liked that video, and if you did, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon because in a few weeks I will be making a new video showing how to paint these same EVA foam bracers that you just saw me building. I'm really excited for that video because I'm going to be showing different painting and weathering techniques and it's going to be really cool and I'm really excited to see how these bracers come together. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and you've gotten some new ideas of how to add detail to your EVA foam armor.